remember this, you must. <laughs> that's be that's all the best I can do. Uh, so in this uh, in this section, we're rotating curves around the x-axis, around the y-axis, around y equals seven. So when you rotate something around, you create a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we're going to be squaring lots of functions. Uh, something that we could be squaring is sine. And getting sine squared, and have to integrate that. Now, I, I've covered this earlier in the year, but uh, I thought I'd hit it again. In order to integrate sine squared, we have to change sine squared. We don't know the, the integral of sine squared directly. Uh, so we have this double angle formula for cosine that we use. So we want to get sine squared by itself. And we can do that by substituting in 1 minus sine squared in for cosine squared. So we have cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x. Cosine of 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x minus the 1 over that's negative 2 sine squared x. Divide by negative 2. So we can replace sine squared with, if we're dividing by negative 2, I'll put the positive one first. 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x. Now we can take the integral of cosine of 2x, or a multiple of that. Now we can integrate from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x dx. So we'll use a double angle formula to replace sine squared with something that we can actually take the integral of. Now if you want to make this a little easier, you don't have to do this. You can factor out a 1 half. 0, over, zero to the power over 2 of 1 minus cosine of 2x dx. And now we can integrate. 1 half times x, and then we have minus 1 half sine of 2x from 0 to pi over 2. And I'm running out of room. So we have 1 half times, how about pi over 2 minus 1 half sine of pi. Now if you plug 0 in, if you minus plug 0 in, you get 0 minus sine of 0, 0. But just don't automatically think, because we're plugging in 0, we're going to get 0. Because if this would have said 1 half cosine of 2x, then it'd be 1 half. It wouldn't be 0. So be careful if you're just going to not even consider 0. If you're going to say, well, it's just 0. We have 1 half times the sine of pi happens to be 0. So we have pi over 2. The answer ends up being pi over 4. But I mean, the mechanics of this problem, of course, is important. But remember why I picked this in the first place is so that we can investigate this little relationship right here. That's what you need to get out of it, and the mechanics, of course. Now, if we have to integrate cosine squared, then that's going to be cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus 1 minus cosine squared x. We replace the sine squared. Cosine of 2x is equal to, uh, that's going to be 2 cosine squared minus 1. So we can add 1 over. Uh, I want to add 1 over. <laughs> there, I added. And then divide by 2. So cosine squared x is equal to 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x. So there's the other one that you either need to be able to develop or you just know. You just memorize it. Now you'll see some of these, some books will just have 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. That's the same thing. It's just the common denominator of 2. Any questions on this concept? Now, I show this again because we're going to be squaring a lot of things. You end up having to uh, integrate cosine squared and sine squared. I think we have a problem down here, actually. So now let's get into what the section's actually about. Find the volume of the object bounded by y equals the square root of x, y equals n, y equals x squared in the first quadrant revolved around the y-axis. 
So we're revolving around the y-axis. y equals the square root of x looks like this, something like this. Uh, I missed a little bit. That should go through the point 1, 1. And y equals x squared looks like this. And of course, we're zoomed in on these two functions to see where the bounded region is. So we got this irregular bounded region right here. Now we could find the area of that. We could take top minus bottom and find the area. But now what we're doing today is we're going to revolve this around the y-axis. So let's pick some, well, let's do this. Let's do the 180 degree turn. And let's pick some arbitrary y value. And if I rotate this point around, it's going to look something like that. We'll get a little circle there. And if I take that same y value on the blue and rotate that around, we get something like that. Now the area in between is being swept around. So here's the area in between. And then the concept is, well, if you add up an infinite amount of areas, from 0 to 1 on the y, you're going to get the volume. You're going to get that third dimension. Well, integral is all about adding up an infinite amount of things. So we're going to integrate. We're going to integrate the area. Now, these washers, they call them, are stacking up along the y-axis. So we're going to integrate with respect to y in this one, so dy. If they're perpendicular to the x-axis, if we're revolving around the x, we're going to integrate with respect to x. Now, both of them would go from 0 to 1, but what we're doing is 0 to 1 on the y. So, so it's really y equals 0 to y equals 1. We never really write the y equals in there. They really should be in there, but we don't. We kind of abbreviate it, just say 0 to 1. But if we're going to integrate with respect to y, these equations have to say x equals so that we, put, we can put the y's in here. Uh, so this should say x is equal to y squared. And this should say x is equal to the square root of y. But it's this one. Let's see. I need the outside first. To get the area in between these, I need the outside radius, or the outside circle, minus the inside circle. And this one, this one's the outside. That one's the inside. We need pi r squared minus pi r squared. We need to find the area in between the two circles. So we're going to take the big one minus the little one. Now the outside one is now, I changed it from y equals x squared to the square root of y. So this is going to be square root of y. That's the outside circle. And the inside circle was square root of x, but now it's y squared. So big minus little. Big radius minus little radius. Because we want to we want to subtract out that circle in the, in the middle right there. Take all of the area of the big minus the little one. All right, so now we have integral from 0 to 1. We're going to factor out the pi. Square root of y squared is y minus, I factored out the pi. That's y to the fourth dy. So we have pi times 1 half y squared minus 1 fifth y to the fifth from 0 to 1. And it's unbelievable, not unbelievable, it, 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 is surpri it does surprise me how many times I will get the integral of y minus y to the fourth is y minus y to the fourth. I get that all the time. And you're like, what? You, don't, you, didn't, you didn't even integrate? And that's the way I, that's what I think when I, when I read the test. I'm like, Wow, you forgot, you didn't even integrate. Boy, you're going to feel silly when I hand this back to you. And that's usually what happens. There's so much going on with this problem, with revolving it and knowing what to do and, and, and thinking of all this stuff that you just forget to integrate. You forget the calculus in the calculus problem. You do everything else, though. So try not to do that. Try to remember to actually integrate. All right, pi times, plug in 1. That's 1 half minus 1 fifth. When we plug in 0, we actually get 0. Thank you. So 
5 tenths minus 2 tenths is 3 tenths. So 3 pi over 10. Questions? It's a work of art. It's awesome. I chose number eight. We're going to rotate this uh, around the y-axis. And they were kind of nice to us because they already put it as x equals. So let's take the 180-degree the turn. And we're going to rotate this around the y-axis. Now these circular disks, they are stacking up along the y-axis. So we're integrating with respect to y. We're going from 0 to 2. We're integrating with respect to y. Now those are circles. The area, we integrate the area. Uh, and then when you integrate, you get that third dimension. You're adding up all the areas. Pi times, they've already solved it for us in, or in y, x equals. So we have 3y over 2 squared. I'll move this in. Pi r squared. We got the radius. The radius is going from the y-axis to the curve, or in this case, a line. That's a function value. It goes from the axis to the curve. All right, so uh, pi integral from 0 to 2 of 9y squared over 4 dy. Let's integrate. That's going to be 9 twelfths y to the third from 0 to 2. 8 times 9 is 72, so we have 72 pi over 12. That's actually 6 pi. 6 pi. There wasn't a washer there because there's not a second function. And we didn't have to find the area in between. We, are, we did find the area from the curve up against the y-axis. There's no washer involved there at all. It's just solid. It's a, it's a cone, really, is what we found the volume of. In exercise 11 through 20, find the volume of the solid, rate, solid generated by revolving the region bounded by li the lines and curves about the x-axis. So let's try the x-axis now. We have to find the bounded region first. So we'll make a little sketch of this. One, two. And we could go back to also, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You probably don't even have to get this exact. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So down to negative eight. So this is what y equals x to the third looks like. And they're telling us y equals zero is a boundary. That's actually the x-axis. And x equals two. So we're taking this area right there. We're taking that and revolving this around the x-axis. Now, this area now is up against the x-axis. There's not two separate functions. So this one's not a washer. This one's just, we call it a circular disk or circle. So how about the 180 degree turn? Be down here, something like that. So we pick an arbitrary x value, rotate that around the x-axis. Now we're going from 0 to 2, integrating 0 to 2. And we are integrating with respect to x, because now these circular disks, they're perpendicular to the x-axis. They're stacking up along the x-axis. And we just have one function. So it's pi, here's the radius, squared dx. So the radius is going from the x-axis to the curve. That's a function value. That's x to the third. So we have pi integral from 0 to 2 of x to the sixth dx. So pi times 1 seventh x to the seventh from 0 to 2. Let's see. x to the sixth is 64. So 128. 128 over 7 pi. And if you plug in 0, minus 0, plug in 0, you get 0. Any questions on that one? Try that one.
one, two, three, four. Over one, down one. Over two, down one, two, three, four. We can look at it that way. Or the two zeros of four minus x squared is plus and minus two. So the parabola looks something like this. And then the line has a y-intercept of two and a slope of negative one. So down one over one, down one over one, up one over one. So here's the line. And it would appear that we're going from negative one to two, because here would be your bounded region. Now, if the graph wasn't good enough to indicate where these are intersecting, you can always set them equal to each other. Four minus x squared is equal to two minus x. So zero is equal to x squared minus x minus two. So we have x minus 2, x plus 1. So x is equal to 2, x is equal to negative 1. So we are going from negative 1 to 2. I was pretty confident with the graph that we were. But if you want to check it algebraically, set them equal to each other, find out your limits. So now we know we're integrating from negative 1 to 2. Keep going. So we're looking at. I think it's fairly easy to draw the 180 degree turn. So we have this line right there, <clears throat> and then one, two, four, this curve here, which is gonna go eh, something like that, and something like that. And so now we're, taking, we're, we're picking an arbitrary x value, and we have this inside circle, and with this arbitrary x value, we have and it gets a little messy. We have that outside circle. So this is a washer. You can factor the pi out front, because it's pi r squared minus pi r squared. You can factor the pi out. Not have to worry about it until the end. So I need the big radius, the outside circle, minus the little radius, the inside circle. And since these are stacking up along the x-axis, we're, we're integrating with respect to x. So the curve is the outside circle, 4 minus x squared. And then the line is the inside circle, 2 minus x. So let's go a little bit farther, negative 1 to 2. This is 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth when we FOIL. Then minus 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Pi. Negative 1 to 2, so 16 minus 4 is 12. So I got those two. Uh, next would be plus 4x, if we're going to do this in order, kind of in reverse order, I, I would suppose. Negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9x squared. So I got those two, and then plus x to the fourth dx. And uh, I think I'm going to stop there. Uh, if you really want to see me integrate a polynomial, let me know. I'd be more than happy to show you that. But I think we're, we're a little beyond that. Um, I would expect you to be able to do this now, the rest of it on a test. So let's not waste time and, and watch me do this for 10 more minutes. But if you want, me, want to see it, I'd be happy to show you.